Welcome to Diary of an MBO, a place where micro business owners can give their insight into what it means to run one of the UK's backbone businesses. First up is Les Roberts. He's now Senior Content Manager here at Bionic, but before that he ran a small tea shop in a seaside town. Here's his story. So the business was a tea shop. Um, the inspiration behind it was there was a lot of um, a lot of other cafes in the area, but they all just sort of sold um, builders tea and the usual coffees, cappuccinos, lattes, things like that. So um, as a sort of avid tea drinker, um, we thought we'd open a tea shop instead. So our, our big thing was um, we sold 60 different types of tea. Unfortunately, people just came in for coffee and builders tea, so we tried to force these different teas on them. Didn't It didn't really take off at first. Um, I don't think people were quite quite ready for that selection. But yeah, that, that was kind of the inspiration, was to do something a little bit different. Um, and also, uh, me and my dad, who both ran the tea shop, uh, we've both been made redundant at pretty much the same time. Um, so we were looking for something different to do. Um, I'd, I'd sort of been in the same job for 10 years. My dad had been in his job for about 30 years. Uh, so we went on a completely different path. And that was, that was kind of the reason and the thinking behind it. And you said you had 60 types of tea. So what was your favourite one or what was the most quirky one that you sold? In, in the sort of variety of teas that we sold, uh, Lapsang Souchong was an odd one, uh, so that's a really smoky tea that I'm pretty sure people just pretend to like. I don't think anyone actually likes it. Sticky toffee pudding tea, which was quite nice. Uh, I think my favourite one though is Darjeeling, which is just a nice, a nice black tea. And what was your biggest achievement as a business owner? Probably getting the thing started and off the ground. Um, when we started, we tried to do a little bit of everything. Um, so we, we had a massive menu with loads of different things on, different sandwiches, baked potatoes, pasta, the lot. So we were selling a lot of things. Bear in mind, there was only the two of us running it. Um, so we kind of bit off a bit more than we could chew at first. And we, we sort of got the decor wrong. So I think we had this idea of a sort of, you know, that sort of like New England sort of surf shack type thing. So we did a lot of, uh, a lot of the interior in light blue. Um, did the signage the same and it didn't really look the way we wanted it, so it actually looked quite cold. Um, so that, getting it off the ground was one thing that was, I think that was a big achievement in itself because we'd never done anything like that before. Um, but then actually identifying what had gone wrong uh, and then turning it around and making it more successful. So the first year was a little bit of a write-off, but then we looked at the menu, we took a load of things off it, we turned ourselves into basically a breakfast bar. So we did different breakfasts from around the world. Um, so we had like I mean, basic stuff like a, a Scottish breakfast with porridge, um, an Irish breakfast was basically bacon, eggs, sausage. Um, I think it was white pudding. What's white pudding? It's like black pudding, but it's white. <laughs> um, that kind, that kind of thing. So and I think we had a Polish breakfast, which was sardines on toast, which sounds quite cliched, but apparently we did some research into this, and that is actually a Polish breakfast. We still had our 60 different types of tea because that was never going away, that was the thing. The bar was called Char Bar, so it was like, that was our thing. Um, and we, we totally redesigned the interior as well and just made the whole place look a lot warmer, changed the lighting, uh, really changed the vibe of the place. And I think after that, it, it definitely took off more. People were sort of more interested. It had, it had better curb appeal, basically. Uh, we changed the sinus to black. It was, it was blue before that. Um, so yeah, we, we, turned it, we turned it around quite considerably. Like it, was, it was pretty much a 180 from what we were doing, sort of looks-wise and feel-wise. So I think, I think the biggest achievement for me was, was turning it around, giving, it, giving the place a real identity and, and getting some regular customers in. So um, the, the sort of that, that's a really satisfying thing about running your own business when what you're doing people really appreciate so we had people that would come back you know they'd say that the food we were doing was great the teas and coffees we served were great the atmosphere was great they like coming in to see us so that's really nice and i think that's as a business owner i think that's probably it's probably going to be up there with everyone's biggest achievement getting retained customers because you know people genuinely like what you do then and that's 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 really satisfying and what would you say your biggest struggle was as a business owner getting customers in was one big struggle. So one mistake that we made was we, we bought an existing business that had been there, I think, for about 20 years. Uh, so that was just a small cafe. Um, but it was, it was very much an old person's cafe. So the, the place where we, we were, um, there's a lot of retired people there. It's, it's quite an affluent and quite an elderly place. Um, it was quite a mix actually because there's a lot of, lot of younger people there as well so there's a broad mix but this was very much an old person's cafe so the mistake we made was we bought that business um, 
and basically we didn't really use any of the goodwill that that business had built up. So whereas it still had the perception that that's an old person's cafe, the old people who used to eat and drink there didn't like what we'd done to it, so they stopped coming. So it was kind of getting customers in was a struggle because it, I don't know if other business owners have felt this, but when you open somewhere new, there's a bit of suspicion about you, especially in quite a, like a tight community like that. We actually, when we were redecorating it, uh, for the, when we um, sort of kitted it out again and we changed the look and feel of it, we actually had one old woman walk past while we were redecorating it and said, our new day wouldn't last very long. And it was like, no, it's still us. It was, it was a really horrible thing for someone to say, but that's the kind of thing you can deal with because if, you know, if people don't like what you're doing, um, you, you kind of got that uphill struggle to get people to come in. Um, so we did, to, to get customers in, we, there, was, there was word of mouth. So we'd tell anyone who'd listen, you know, come and we did have friends and family would, would come to us. But when people see a place that's like a cafe, especially when people see it's empty, I don't know if you know yourself, it kind of puts you off from going in. Uh, to where you know some somewhere's full or half full, you think oh, I'll give that a go. But if somewhere's always empty, it um, it kind of puts people off as they're walking past. As we're surrounded by other cafes as well, if they were full, people would sort of gravitate towards them. So I think that was that was the biggest struggle really getting customers in. But once we did, and they liked what we did, they they keep coming back, which as I said was uh, that was great. And what advice would you give to someone wanting to start up their own business? I'd say really do your research, look into what you're doing and make sure that the product or the service that you're offering is something that people want or if they don't want, want it, make sure that you can convince them that they do want it. If it's not something people need, you need to be able to convince them that they do need it. If, you, if your plan isn't like completely robust and you, you sort of plan for every eventuality because there's a lot of extra costs that you won't think of as well at first. Um, so go, go in with a really strong plan of what you want to do, what you want to give people and what you want to get from it. And also have the courage of your convictions as well. So if you've got, if you've got something you believe in, really convince other people that you believe in this and they should believe in it as well. And you know, what you're offering is the, is the best thing that they can, they can possibly have. Um, but also by the same token, don't be stubborn. So if, if, if things aren't working, don't be afraid to like, look at why they're not working really sort of do a deep dive into that and just change things around if you need to but i'd say i'd say just have the courage of what you're doing and be prepared for some very long hours if you could go back to the start of your business setup journey would you change anything and why um yeah i think i think the big mistake we made at first as i said was was buying a different business so what i'll probably do now if I, if i went to do that again i'll probably just look at a vacant property and take over that instead and just sort of start from the beginning um, because that when we bought that business as i said we didn't use any of the goodwill so it, it was kind of like it was dead money really and um, so that kind of put us on the back foot as well because you know as i said earlier the people who used to go there didn't like what we did so they stopped going the people who didn't go there still assumed it was the same sort of place so they didn't come so i just sort of start like from a completely clean slate and yeah and probably just do more research into what what it is that we wanted to do because we, I mean, me and my dad, we'd had no experience in running a business at all. And we just went into it pretty blind and there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of information out there to sort of say, you know, what you should do or what you shouldn't do. Or if there was, we didn't, we didn't look for it. Uh, we just sort of had this plan in our head and we thought, well, this will work because it works elsewhere. Um, not sort of thinking about there are quite a lot of intangibles that you you don't know about as i say if you know you you could have the best product in the world but if people don't believe in it themselves or they're not interested you're gonna struggle so yeah i'd, I'd say go into it with a really robust plan and just keep refining things and that that's that's probably what i'd do differently when you reflect on your time as a business owner what do you feel was it a positive experience or a negative one i'd definitely look back on it as a positive time i think there's a massive sense of achievement of creating your own business getting it off the ground keeping it running i think we ran for about two years before we sold it uh, basically the reason we sold it was because it was paying for the stock it was paying for the staff but it wasn't paying for us so we were getting no money from it at all so it feels like we nearly made it because most things were getting paid for um but we didn't couldn't just quite get it over the line and i think we um i think that was probably down to the first year going really badly um and yeah, I, I do look back on it fondly and I would, I would definitely do it again. Is there a certain mindset or personality type you think you need to be a business owner? Um, yeah, I think you've, you've got to be driven. 
and you've got to believe in your own idea and your own ability to, to like to create your own business keep it running you've got to be very strong willed because um, one of the worst things you can do and this, this I think this was another thing that affects us is if you, st if you start something like a cafe and then you completely change it although that's an acceptance that things haven't gone right and you're prepared to change it from the outside looking in people can look at that and think oh these don't know what they're doing and then that can sort of you know set you back and people have a, a, a preconception about you i think also it's, it's things like if you open uh, open a cafe and you're open i don't know from let's say 7 a.m in the morning till 11 o'clock at night and then you suddenly start changing your hours so you think oh no one's coming in at seven so we'll open at nine and no one's coming in of an even so we'll, we'll finish at five and then you go back to like opening maybe of an evening, which is another thing we did. I, tr I tried to, because I thought the real money was in sort of opening it as a bar at night. And again, that didn't really take off at all because people just weren't interested in going into this place. It just didn't look right to them. Um, so if you keep chopping and changing what you're doing, that can sort of um, set a bad tone for people. And it, it can make it look like you're not really sure what you're doing. So I think you've got to be, got to believe in what you do and just have the courage of your convictions really you've got to be very strong-willed as well and as i said you've got to be prepared to work long hours definitely